uh, hi. Uh, hi everyone. Hello. Thank you for joining us in this uh, Daedalus webinar. My name is Antonio Matarranz and I'm the marketing director of Daedalus and Meaning Cloud. And today we're going to talk about uh, using text analytics and how this can help business better understand their customers. Today we, ha today we have two speakers with me. We have Seth Graham and my colleague Jared McGuinness. Uh, Seth is the leading industry analyst uh, covering our space and he is going to make a very interesting and informative introduction to the subject. And then uh, Jared uh, will give us a few interesting real-world application scenarios using uh, meaning cloud technology to deliver business value in, in customer experience and voice of customer scenarios. So before handing over to Seth, a uh, couple of uh, logistics. Uh, you should be seeing a, a widget like this, uh, go to webinar widget. After the presentation that will take for about 15 minutes, we'll do a 10 minutes Q&A. So whenever you want to ask a question, either send your question via the text or uh, raise your hand to speak and we'll open your mic and you'll be able to, to make your question. Obviously, uh, we, we are recording the webinar and after the, the webinar, we'll be sending you a link to the, to the recording. So, uh, Seth, I'm, I'm handing over to you when you, when you want. Thank you, uh, Antonio. So, uh, as, let me make sure I'm projecting here. Uh, it's good, Antonio? Perfect. Uh, so, I'm Seth Grimes. I am a consultant with Alta Plana Corporation, a company I founded in 1997. And I, as Antonio explained, I'm an industry analyst covering text analytics. So, I'm, I'm really pleased to have had this invitation from Meaning Cloud to present to you today. Uh, I've interacted with the parent company's founder, co founder, uh, Jose Carlos Gonzalez, uh, quite a few times over the last several years at events in the United States and in Europe, and I've been really impressed with the progress of the organization in answering business needs with appropriate technologies. So, uh, just uh, very quickly about myself, uh, the upper left screen, a bit from my consulting company. I do a lot of writing on this topic, text analytics. I pasted in a few items toward the bottom here. I, uh, in particular, take a focus on sentiment analysis for probably the last six or so years. Uh, the idea that our written, spoken, and all other forms of human communication are really full of attitude, opinion, emotion. And I organize a conference. Uh, I have the, uh, the eighth instance of my sentiment analysis symposium coming up in July in New York. It would be great to have you all attend. I'm very pleased that Meaning Cloud has signed on as a top-level sponsor for the symposium. If you get in contact with Antonio or others at Meaning Cloud, they will provide for you a discount code that you can use to uh, attend the conference at a discount. So I, I really am interested in these technologies, but really the question is business. Uh, unless you are a researcher or Maybe some of you are software developers who are busy implementing algorithms for text analysis or related areas. Uh, if you're not one of those two things, your focus really is business. That is, how does one successfully and meaningfully apply these text analysis technologies to boost business outcomes? Business outcomes, yes. Well, a primary one is going to be profitability. And yeah, there are concepts of profitability even in the private non profit sector where the measures might be uh, excellence, for instance, in government rather than cash profit, but, but still, it's all business. So uh, business here does include both selling to customers, and that might be consumers, but also business to business customers, uh, in other words, other corporations. It includes government and the public sector, also politics for that matter, what people say in textual forms, on social media, on online media, 
matters a lot for politics and policy. Business here includes healthcare and the delivery of medical services. It includes media and publishing. It includes science and research. These are all important concept, I'm sorry, important application areas for text analytics. So central here is the voice of the customer, or if you are in one of these other areas, the voice of the market, the voice of the public, the voice of the patient, and also a concept that is starting to gain a lot of currency, the voice of the employee. There's a strong role for text analytics in understanding the voice of the customer and making use of it for customer-focused business. So we'll spend a few minutes looking at the why and how of text analytics for excellent customer experience. We'll talk about some technology options, not go all that deep because uh, there are good reasons that you, if you are a business user of these technologies or if you're a software developer, there are good reasons that you no longer have to get bogged down in all of the technical nuance here. And we will talk about the business implications of the technologies and trends in particular. And then just a bit on best practices here for the application of text analytics in customer experience programs. So why is this important? Well, let's, let's set a baseline here. Customer experience, I'm reading. Customer experience is the product of an interaction between an organization and a customer over the duration of their relationship. Well, customer experience, interactions. Uh, interactions are not just when someone walks into your store, a physical store, and encounters a salesperson. Uh, interactions are not just online interactions when someone visits your website or uses your app. Interactions are not just when someone calls into the contact center or sends an email message about a product or service question, complaint. Interaction can involve a warranty claim and its processing. Interactions now we see also involve the products and services themselves. Customer experience extends to someone's experience interacting with your product and service, even if no human or website for that matter is involved. This is important. Pay attention because studies have shown that customer experience leaders among corporations, say within the uh, the larger corporations in this case, in this 2013 study, customer experience leaders have a higher stock market return, stock market return of course reflecting not only current profitability but future prospects for profitability, a higher return than the stock market average, that's the standard and poor's 500 index, and far greater return in terms of stock price than the customer experience laggards. Those laggards are the ones who are not paying much attention to customer experience through a customer experience management program, not even applying these text analytics technologies or other technologies that help create optimal customer experience. So customer experience is built on and via marketing. Before people even encounter your company and your products, in person uh, by buying them or going into a store or visiting a website. They learn about this through marketing. That can include formal marketing like advertising, but also word of mouth marketing, of course. Customer experience is built on products and services and how well they function, how well they're designed, how well they're suited to a purpose, whether they're considered to deliver value proportionate to the price, on the support experience. And then customer experience is, of course, built on sharing. In today's sharing economy, centering around social media, but also around back channels such as text, email, and things that are not necessarily visible to someone publicly looking uh, the way that Twitter is visible. Customer experience is communicated, as we've discussed, via the voice of the customer. And you can substitute if you want there the voice of the patient, the market, the public, depending on what your business is. So let's start with a quotation here in our look at the voice of the customer. I'm going to read this for you, Yoshio Ishizaka from uh, Toyota. I have learned that everything is dominated by the market, so whenever we are stuck with any obstacles or difficulties, I always say to myself, listen to the market, listen to the voice of the customer. Well, this quotation is actually 
oh, something like seven or eight years old. I used it in a report I wrote back in the year 2008. I have a screenshot from the title here. I'm not going to give you a link because it's out of date, but in any case, Voice of the Customer, Text Analytics for the Responsive Enterprise. We have had the realization for quite a few years now that text analytics, the ability to understand so-called unstructured information is key to analyzing the voice of the customer and exploiting it in order to become a customer experience leader per that earlier slide, in order to have the highest level of profitability, stock market return, and all of that kind of stuff. Now, things have changed in the years since 2008. Uh, my study then was sponsored by IBM, SAS, Business Objects. Now there are many new entrants into the field, providers that provide a much better uh, tailored set of technologies and solutions to different uh, individual needs. Uh, we have a huge volume of communications growth since then on social and online media. The technology has improved, but the base conditions remain the same. Two more quotations, one from Paul Raines from Home Depot. Again, this dates back quite a few years. That customer satisfaction initiatives really pay off. They're measured via voice of the customer programs, surveys in the Home Depot case, and you see improvement in such important business outcomes as likelihood to recommend, find, and buy. That's what it comes down to, driving sales, upsell, cross-sell. There are other factors in here not of such concern to Home Depot, such as reducing churn. Uh, that's going to be of interest to someone who sells a subscription service like a telecom provider, but these are all areas where studying the voice of the customer leads to higher customer satisfaction, leads to better customer experience, leads to positive business outcomes. Second quotation on the slide from someone who's uh, quite notable actually in this sort of area, in the metrics area, Avinash Kaushik from Google, let the customers talk. We want them to talk. Give them a chance to tell you in their own voice the reasons and provide you with suggestions. We need to learn from our customers. But as we know, Doing manual analysis, studying everything that happens online, on social, for two of my screens here, all of those reviews that appear not just on Amazon, but also on TripAdvisor, on Yelp, on a myriad number of sites, you can, humans don't scale. They don't scale in the volume, in, in proportion to the volume of all of these postings that carry important business information with them. They don't scale in terms of the velocity, being able to run 24-7 to do analyses. They don't scale when it comes to the type of information. I have material that's posted here in English, but of course people communicate in uh, really uh, uh, dozens of leading languages around the world, and uh, far, far more than that if you consider, uh, I, I don't mean to denigrate them, but secondary languages, secondary only in the number of speakers and so on. So you can't really just be operating only in English. And frankly, if this were written in Chinese, it would be opaque to me. I couldn't understand it without the use of technology or without the use of expensive human resources. Of course, there's material that goes beyond the online. There is the traditional type of material as shown in the bottom center here. There are surveys. But how do you keep up with surveys when you have tens, hundreds of thousands of customers, maybe even million, who want to tell you what their experience has been with your products and services. Uh, there's nothing like asking people. That's actually part of the process of keeping them happy. Ask them what they thought. So getting back into customer experience in particular, what are leading organizations doing so far as text analytics is concerned? I've used here an excerpt a table, two tables actually, from a report done by a friend of mine, Bruce Temkin at the Temkin Group. He uh, spent a lot of years at Forrester Research. He's now a leading customer experience consultant. I've had uh, quite a number of conversations with him about text analytics per se to actually uh, try to uh, educate him and his colleagues in the technologies. Uh, I have two charts here from a report that Bruce produced last year. One chart looks at customer experience maturity of organizations. The red bars represent companies with high voice of the customer experience and the clearer, the white ones, are low maturity. The red ones use feedback, the high maturity ones, that is, use feedback from employees. They use social media listening. They look at email, contact center notes, chats with customers, voice analytics of phone calls. 
these are the different touch points that an organization has with its customers and for that matter with its prospects. And then on the bottom chart here, when they not only look at those feedback sources, but use text analysis in the text analytics in the uh, analysis of this, uh, we see that much more prevalent in the high VOC maturity companies. That is, the more mature companies in customer experience programs do use these automated text analysis technologies. Now I will turn to a chart from a study I conducted myself, uh, Meaning Cloud, uh, the larger company Daedalus, and uh, the, another variant of the product called Text Analytics was, I'm very grateful, a sponsor of this study. It, my, my study is available for free download. I gave you the URL there in the bottom. So just go to that URL and you have to enter your email, but you can read the study for yourself. This is just one chart out of many from that study. You see here information that organizations either need or expect to need to extract or analyze from all of these sources of text. So the ones that Bruce Temkin mentioned in his report were uh, employee feedback, social media listening, email, call center notes, chats, and all of that. We see very high here, top of the list, topics and themes. It's not enough to just identify terms that are present, words or whatever that are present in all of these sources. You want to understand how they can be grouped topically or by themes. Um, that might be uh, topics and themes might include complaints. They might include uh, intent to buy, product inquiries, stuff like that. Uh, they can include product groupings. Uh, it really depends on your own business. And then second on the list, you see here sentiment. You see opinions, attitude, opin uh, emotion, perceptions, and intent. And note that these various bars uh, add up to more than 100%. This is a multi-response survey. People can choose multiple answers. And what we really conclude here is that there's a high correlation between sentiment and topics and themes. People want to be able to understand the sentiments, attitudes, opinions, emotions about products and services at a topic and theme level, not just at a term or entity level. You see lots of other good stuff that people are looking to get out of that spectrum of text sources. Uh, you can download the report and study a lot more there at your, at your leisure. So uh, let's, let's look at just a few of those things and then talk about some industry trends. Uh, the, well, the few of the things uh, starts with the number two there on the list, sentiment, mood, opinions, emotions, and intent. We really understand that you need to get at this good stuff within your customer communications to truly understand your customer and serve them better, to create a better customer experience. The traditional method of surveys with a Likert scale, choose a number between one and five to rate the service or whatever, that really doesn't cut it because it doesn't have explanatory power. You need to be able to get at that voice of the customer, unprompted or solicited for that matter in the form of surveys, and analyze that text in order to do the root cause analysis to really find out what's behind those numerical scales and to hear in the customer's own voice. Drivers and trends, of course, social and online media, the huge growth is a driver of these technologies. And I'll add, going beyond social and online media, there is text messaging, email, chat, uh, all kinds of personal, interpersonal communications that never make it online that are not quite so visible. So organizations are trying to find a way to get into them. Another driver here is cloud services, the so-called API economy. API is application programming interface. Well, actually, meaning cloud is an application programming interface to a web cloud service. So it's squarely within this API economy trend. Why is this important? Well, actually, uh, these types of services available via easy-to-use APIs, often uh, RESTful APIs, uh, insulate the end user, whether you're a business analyst or a software developer, from the, comp from the complexity of understanding the algorithms and building text analysis models. That's extremely important because it allows you to focus on your business rather than on learning how to do the ins and outs of natural language processing, whether you should choose statistical methods or taxonomies or linguistic methods. These are options available to you with these cloud services, but you don't have to focus on the technical nuance. Instead, you focus on your own business. Big data, of course, is a driver and the trend to data science 
and data monetization. Those are complementary things. The idea behind monetization is that there are various services out there, GNIP, owned by Twitter, and DataSift are prominent among them. Facebook is uh, delivering its data. Uh, you can get it data through all kinds of sources, and you can then really use it in ways that you've never been able to use it before via data science. Now, the volume and velocity of data, two of the three big data Vs, create an opportunity for new analytical approaches, and the variety uh, creates an imperative to fuse information from different sources and of different types. But the richness that's obtainable here is just immense. Richness includes being able to identify people who are speaking based on, you know, maybe based on their gender, their economic background, their education, and so on, based on how they use language. We track their behavior and we correlate it with all of this information from text, and we make connections. So it's a really exciting time to be in this field because we do have an ability to integrate information from disparate sources, to synthesize conclusions across those sources, to make automated inferences in order, once again, to better study our customers. So what are we seeing here also? Well, uh, there is uh, great data visualization out there. Here's just a sample. I wanted to use something that's freely available, a pedometer. It's kind of cool. We look at trends. We rate according to sentiment. We correlate with events. This is the direction things are going. Now, these types of interfaces are enabled by backend text analysis services. If you chose to, you can build stuff like this yourself with the proper software tools using these services. So uh, this is just one example of many, many, many that you could find out there. What we're really getting to, though, is coming back to something I said earlier, the ability to answer important questions for business uh, about social, online media, about what people are saying in enterprise interactions. What are they saying? What's trending? Well, there's actually an increase in complexity as you go from top to bottom of this slide. And we get to the bottom, we get to an attempt to understand what's behind the opinion, the root causes. Because when you know root causes, you can solve problems. You can improve products and services. You can improve customer experience. You can boost your loyalty, uh, that is, the continued business, upsell, cross-sell, and all that business good stuff, once again, no matter what business you're in. So the question is, how can we link opinions, profiles, behaviors, and transactions to discern intent and predict actions? We need a variety of methods. So my next to concluding slide, uh, I list a bunch of methods here. We can do polling. We can do surveys that include net promoter score. We do natural language processing. We study people, uh, their facial expressions via biometrics. We study networks and information flow. We do various types of data mining to look for affinities, that is clusters, to look for derived concepts such as influence and authority, to look for advanced measures, metrics, stuff that's not readily measurable in the data but can be inferred by analytics, satisfaction, loyalty, motivations, and so on. And we look to have excellent business outcomes, like uh, improve the likelihood to buy, lower the churn propensity, and all of that kind of stuff. So once again, getting back to the core point here, the importance of text analytics in customer experience, I'm going to borrow once again. I, chart from my a table from my friend Bruce Tempkin that talks about voice of the customer programs and voice of the customer programs that incorporate text analytics. Uh, my slides are readily available, uh, so uh, you know I'm not going to read through this or anything like that, but I will focus you on the bottom line here, executive mindset, where today's voice of the customer programs look at what's the score. That might mean the net promoter score, for instance. VOC programs with text analytics look at business outcomes. How can we build more loyalty with our target customers? That's what it's all about. It's about loyalty. It's about lower churn. It's about greater profitability. And the key to this is text analytics. So once again, thank you very much, Antonio, and your colleagues at Meaning Cloud for inviting me to participate in today's webinar. I'm going to stick around for the question and answer. But uh, for the moment, I guess I'm going to hand over to the next presenter, who is Jared McGinnis. Thank you again. Hi there. Just get my screen up. There we go. Okay. Thank you very much, Seth. 
So what I thought I'd talk about is just kind of show some, some real-world examples uh, to kind of just make sure that I, I, I'm sure most of us know that this, this technology is being used in real-world situations and solving real business cases. But I'd like to, I thought I'd just kind of show you some, uh, some of the ones that I, I, I find uh, the most interesting and kind of exciting. So the first one is probably the, the most typical, I would say. So um, uh, this is an example of our technology being used uh, within the banking sector, but I think it's, it's a more general problem than that. And that, that problem is that uh, there's a number of ways that the customers and, and channels that the way the customers are interacting with businesses. So this could be through uh, call center interactions and utilizing kind of voice to text um, and, and uh, transcription. Uh, structured, semi-structured content such as like online surveys, and then also kind of um, you know on-the-spot surveys at, uh, at, at the, lo the business locations, and it gets thrown in together through kind of a C CRM uh, system. But the fact is, the volumes are, are, are just far too much uh, for for kind of human consumption. So that's kind of where the kind of text analytics comes into, right? Really starting to kind of automate some of this task. Um, and additionally, this is, you know, these things are not kind of born ex nihilo, there are, there's always kind of legacy systems, and there's always uh, a need for kind of integration into the existing uh, CX management platform. And so this is actually, uh, you know, quite useful when we, we utilize uh, service-based approaches uh, to text analytics. And ultimately what we're looking for is just kind of really uh, distill down, you know, what, what uh, our customers are, are saying, who are they talking about, what brands are they talking about us, talking about our competitors, uh, locations, you know, different uh, people within the organization, and just what are they saying about that, what are, what are the details, what are the relationships between those, those, those concepts of an extraction. And most importantly, it's about how do they feel about that, right, to really get that, that sense of, you know, is this a positive or negative or neutral, to be able to really start to develop, you know, actionable uh, understanding. Uh, from what, what our customers are saying. And the, the, the reason being is, and so, again, so the solution that kind of Meaning Cloud has is because of our kind of service-based approach, uh, you know, the kind of integration to existing, you know, utilizing APIs and, and integration is quite easy. But the fact that, you know, you know out of the box, uh, there, there comes a number of kind of predefined themes, such as kind of a, identifying the products being mentioned, uh, the channels, so the, the, the most obvious channels there, and be able really starting to be able to do that, uh, the, that assessment. Secondly, we start to get into kind of more interesting use cases, or at least uh, uh, more atypical, but um, that's becoming increasingly less so. And people are starting to understand the kind of the power of not waiting for your customer to come and tell you what the problem is, but to go and see out in the kind of wilds of the internet what they're saying and start to to you know create actionable insights uh, before it becomes uh, a problem, before it becomes the stage where they are kind of complaining at uh, you know the call center or sh shaking their fists uh, within the uh, the branch. And so this is an example from uh, another client who was developing a, a social media na uh, analyst tool. And the quite nice thing about this is this, you know, they used our technology to be able to kind of give the, their customers an enhanced, uh, an enhanced product and service, right? So they're utilizing the text analytic systems to do something to solve a, a business need of their own, right? And that's specifically being able to do clustering and identifying, you know, uh, what people are saying, but also is there a kind of, you know, is there a profile that we can identify and understand? Okay, we had a, you know, we had, we launched the a advertising campaign, and it seems to be performing poorly for females, uh, urban females uh, with between 45 and 55 years, right? And so you can start to tweak and and uh, in real time the the marketing message that you as an organization has developed. So that's what they saw, their customers wanted, and we kind of utilize our technology to be able to deliver that. And this is quite, and this is where we're starting to get, you know, we're expanding beyond uh, internal data, the content that we already have, or the information that we already have, and starting to go out into the wilds of the internet and the social web to identify it. And the last example is quite interesting. So the first one, I guess you could say, was, you know, knowing what you should know. And that's the idea that this content, this information from your customers has already kind of come in. 
but it's at a volume is such that you require you know text analytical tools to automate at that and really kind of get into uh, and and find out what you as an organization should know because this information has come to you right and the second the second use case was really about knowing what can be known and that's the fact that these people are talking on social social media and your customers are talking on social media they're mentioning your brand they have a positive or negative feeling towards that and you're able to kind of go out there and kind of pull that in before they've had to explicitly uh, talk to you this third case is really you know we could say this is more about kind of knowing the unknowns right so kind of you know the Rumfeldian uh, contribution to the English language this distinction here and this is really about kind of looking for kind of discovery and emergent information and this is very powerful right so it's not only kind of are you bound by the kind of themes and trends and concepts that you know beforehand a priori it's in utilizing kind of clustering techniques and unsupervised learning tools to be able to uh, identify what's what they're being talked about that you haven't thought of yet and that's extremely that's extremely powerful and you see a number of clients uh, identifying the power of that because this can then fold back into that use case number one right you can start to identify these emergent uh, you know this emergent information trends and themes and start to you know know that you need to identify these things and it starts to become part of your canonical view of what your customers are talking about it's extremely powerful and very very useful so you have a much more kind of dynamic understanding of, of your users and this is, you know, for the kind of use cases that I showed, this, this example is used, they utilize kind of the meaning cloud technology, right? So for, there, it's a series of APIs that you can utilize, cloud-based uh, approaches. It's also semantic, and I'll talk about what kind of semantic uh, concept extraction and analytics is versus uh, kind of, uh, you know, vanilla. Um, but those APIs are also, whether they, you're a developer, whether, you know, your organization is much more comfortable they, you know, with uh, Excel spreadsheets and a data analyst is utilizing these roles, or whether you have a, a developer that, that uh, would rather be working directly with the APIs uh, through SDKs or, or plugins. And Meaning Cloud enables both of these approaches because we kind of see that one solution fits all. Uh, it just really isn't uh, practical in kind of the modern uh, business climate. And feel free uh, afterwards to kind of give it a go because uh, uh, it's it's freely available and you you it's quite uh, it takes quite a while before you start hitting the uh, the limits of, of of the API and the kind of number of, uh, of calls before uh, the start charging. I'll talk about that at the end. Important thing to kind of remember is that we're looking at kind of semantic analysis. Is really understanding that these these things that the machine is extracting these these uh, sequence of characters and letters actually mean something uh, to the humans using it. They mean something. They exist in the world, right? People, organizations, uh, people, and the relationships between different things. People have relationships with organizations such as roles. People uh, espouse opinions and facts. And we can roll these 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 concepts and entities within kind of themes, uh, and it's very useful to util to, to utilize uh, the the semantic approach because you start to get a, a view of a context, and these things aren't just kind of exist in isolation as keywords, uh, but actually uh, things in the world and the relationships between them, and that really starts to uh, provide kind of uh, benefits to be able to do disambiguation when. Uh, it's it's fine and, and dandy to to identify automatically John Smith, but to really to understand John Smith, the politician, versus John Smith, the footballer, uh, is is more useful. And there's a number of APIs out there uh, to kind of uh, address a number of business cases, whether that be kind of concept extraction, the various entities and the concepts, dates, addresses, uh, etc. Uh, as well as kind of classifications, and it's all kind of about you know providing the tools for you uh, to solve your business need. There are certain things that require just classification or topic extraction or a combination of both, right? And we've kind of identified some very standard models for classifications. IPTC is a great example because it's so uh, it uh, comes from a uh, the news industry, so it's very kind of encyclopedic in its coverage, right? So it's very useful for a broad range of of, of business requirements. 
sentiment analysis as well, whether that's through the kind of entire uh, text or uh, at the at the aspect level, you know, at the entity level, to understand the positive negative uh, uh, position of of, of, the, of the text. So one of the key ones, uh, and most often kind of talked about, is is topic extraction. It's usually the most useful because you start to identify. You get you really start to drill down and find the kind of, you know, semantic units of of a huge amount of text, and it enables you know a tool for your your domain experts to really identify what this is about and move and 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 not have to wade through uh, all of the verbiage, right? And because we're kind of looking at utilizing semantic approaches, it's to be able to identify t Tim Cook uh, has this relationship with Apple, and it starts to do some dis disambiguation, right? So it's starting to understand, uh, you know, so this Apple is most likely Tim Cook because these things are coexistent in the text, right? Also kind of co-reference to understand the kind of consistency of the terms being referred to. Uh, and it utilizes a standard ontology, uh, which has quite wide coverage, a number of different themes. I think it's uh, about 78 uh, different themes. Uh, and the ontology has about 437 nodes, I think, uh, uh, is the total number. So there's quite good coverage. But the most important thing here is that it's extendable, right? So to be able to customize it for your specific uh, uh, topic and, and information, your customer base is the, the domain that you are in or that your customers are in and be able to address that and refine that and get kind of the and really start to improve that precision and recall uh, from the, the text analytics uh, engine underneath the APIs. Classification of, is the other kind of main uh, use case for this technology. Just be able to kind of identify a chunk of uh, a chunk of text and about what it's about, right? And uh, at a very kind of broad uh, scope of, of that. So the the initial one was really looking at the entities, the concepts, uh, the individually mentioned. This is much more about what is this 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 chunk of text about, right? Uh, again, at Meaning Cloud, it's about uh, developing the tools. It's not about uh, being kind of dogmatic about the approach. It's about enabling various approaches, right? So we support kind of you know uh, machine learning approaches as well as rule-based approach. Uh, and it again, it isn't a uh, one size fits all. Certain you know certain business needs uh, lend themselves towards machine learning approaches, and others look for rules. There's 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 trade-offs on either approach. And we also support a hybrid approach, right? To enable you to kind of really tweak it and get towards uh, the kind of precision and recall for the text that you would be pushing through uh, the APIs. Utilizing, you know, as I said before, kind of utilizing very kind of important standard classification models, uh, IPTC, most noteworthy, Eurovoc, and AIB is there. And if you're interested in it, please get in contact with us. We can uh, open up the uh, the, uh, the beta uh, testing to you, um, but it's very soon actually, I think within the next month or so, will be open to others as well. Uh, again, to kind of just harp on the, the, the importance of this uh, for really kind of solving your problems uh, specifically, these things are customizable, right? You can upload your own uh, classification models, you can tweak the ones that exist currently. And finally, sentiment analysis, again, at the kind of global perspective, but also as aspect-based, really kind of identify, uh, you know, although this entire text is quite negative, this specific uh, aspect is positive, right, be able to identify those, even within sentences, to be able to do that. Um, and to identify, you know, objective fact versus uh, subjective opinion. Natural languages are infinitely complex and things like irony can really throw off and sarcasm can really throw off uh, kind of automated means that's what we've been developing and it's in beta currently right now but developing automated means to understand uh, that use of language right uh, and once again customizable right we appreciate that even on sentiment analysis really when you start to get into kind of you know nearing uh, you know uh, human-like, if not human, better uh, uh, precision and recall. It's about customizing it for the specific content and text that you as an organization are dealing with. And we're also kind of expanding this, this work uh, 
that I showed in kind of the, the previous use cases to be able to start to kind of do multi-dimensional user profiling. Right? This thing I talked about, identifying a bit of text, you know, through the interactions in social media to start to identify and profile uh, individual users, but also kind of to be able to, to cluster those as well and see and start to understand and appreciate what people are saying, but what kind of person is saying this, uh, you know, uh, having talking about your 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 topic and your your content. Um, once again, just talk about the customization, just because it's very important, but also that it's not kind of relying on a really, uh, it's really kind of it's it's. Uh, leveling out the, the the learning curve and not requiring programming. Although if 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 your organization is is well acquainted with it, that is possible. But you know, creating these these customization tools through kind of friendly graphic units or interface, but also the ability uh, to batch to upload um, through Excel uh, if you've already kind of been developing uh, uh, this content. So it's not a required. It's not a requirement that you have to use the graphical user interface. You can bootstrap very quickly uh, and be able to utilize all the kind of meaning cloud functionality as well as kind of the power of customization uh, very quickly. And just a, just a final slide to kind of sum it up. This idea of just you know enabling kind of high quality semantic analysis uh, with a very friendly interface, right? So be able to not to not require that specialized uh, expertise within your organization. You can just kind of plug and play and utilize this this approach and start to get immediate results. Start to enhance your own kind of product offering uh, to provide to your customers to get utilize this kind of specialized technology. And there's a number of entry points, whether it be through Excel spreadsheets, APIs, or SDKs. We're really about kind of facilitating this plug and play approach. This technology, the complexity of the technology should be uh, obscured from um, the, the end user. And really it's about kind of just uh, pushing buttons and pulling levers to be able to provide this kind of very powerful technology. And we understand that, you know, it, it, it's a very esoteric technology and uh, it might, it might seem risky, so by enabling kind of open, you know, uh, software as a service, kind of the freemium model, really to let you try that out and identify the benefits and, and see the benefits not only for yourself but for your customers and your products. And we have a very kind of generous offering to enable 40,000 requests. So as you see, you know, you can, as you can kind of roll this out to your customers and see whether they kind of uptake and again start paying for it, you can start to kind of expand your bandwidth as well, right? And it takes quite a while uh, before you start hitting uh, a, a, a commercial plans, but even there you see that uh, it's it's uh, not that expensive, right? So for 120,000 requests, you know, $100 a day isn't bad. Um, and that's the the end of the conversation. So we'll I'll switch uh, to um, let's see. So I'm showing my screen, and we'll open it up for questions. So feel free to ask me or Seth. Um, and yes, thank you very much for your attention. Do we have any questions? Also, feel free to uh, email uh, either of us um, uh, if you have questions offline. We can take it offline. 
we're we're happy to kind of continue the conversation there as well.